What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a group review of a few Zuru X-Shot blasters. The MK3, a spring-powered three-barrel pistol. The Reflex 6, a six-shot spring-powered pistol. The Hawkeye, a spring-powered single-shot blaster with a break action system, pretty fancy. And the Vigilante, a two-shot springer that's both pump action and break barrel, kind of. Group review of all of these products in this one video. Let's get into it. That dude is so in it to win it. The intensity, the intensity is real. <laughs> Included with the Vigilante is the blaster itself and darts. Included with the Hawkeye is the blaster itself, scope, darts, and five cup halves. Included in this combo kit are two Reflex 6 pistols, two MK3 pistols, darts, and four cup halves. Now to the external overview of each blaster, starting out with the Vigilante. Super long, tactical looking barrel, but no front barrel attachment point. And these look pretty cool, these little ridges, but this is not a tactical rail. This white thing here is the priming handle. It's a spring action blaster to prime. You do that. It's a two barrel blaster, but when you prime the blaster, you're only priming it to fire once, as opposed to a two stage trigger where one prime allows you to go bang bang, shooting twice before repriming. So one shot per prime, and with a super long barrel, you don't have to load it into the front and then get a ramrod like it's 1770. Instead, you load through the brake action system, so you can push this little orange button back here, which unlocks the barrel unit. And after that's unlocked, you pull down on the barrel like that, exposing these two orange barrels. And these are the actual barrels. This isn't a functional barrel, it's more just like a faux, cool looking barrel shroud type thing. Then to load, you just shove your darts into these barrels as if you're front loading. It's just like you're front loading, but technically I suppose it's not because that's like mid loading. Front load, mid load, by whatever name, that's how you load up the Vigilante. Then you can shut the barrel like that. It's worth noting this Vigilante is the only blaster in this group review that's not really compatible with Nerf Elite darts. And that's because Nerf Elite darts don't load into this barrel in quite the same way as the X-Shot darts. So when you go to shut the barrel shroud, it catches on the Nerf Elite dart and it kind of crimples it up and the chrono readings also agree that it's just not really compatible with Nerf Elite darts. So kind of a bummer, but the other blasters work just fine with the Elite darts. So that's how you load the Vigilante. Again, this little orange button unlocks the barrels, but it's not like a spring-loaded barrel. So it doesn't feel like a break action, like a break action BB gun where you're actually priming the blaster. Uh, the pump action primes it. So there's very little resistance when you open up the barrel like that. It also adds another step because you have to open it and then also prime it after you've loaded the blaster instead of doing it at the same time, like with the break action. So kind of an interesting design here. But moving back, here's the grip. Uh, it's a very small grip, but I wouldn't actually say this is uncomfortable. It's not my preference because it's like a horizontal grip instead of a vertical pistol grip. I feel like the orientation of this is more like a sword or a lightsaber rather than a, a, like a gun or a blaster. Like when my hand picks this up, I feel like I want to shoot it like this instead of all the way down. Some people dig it, and this is uh, pretty thin, but it's not uncomfortable for my giant hand. This whole handguard area is pretty oversized, so it's well done. Trigger pull is pretty standard. This blaster, of course, does not have slam fire. Then back in the stock area, it's kind of like too short to actually be a stock. I feel like you're supposed to fire this blaster from the hip, but this little blue thing opens up for storage. So if you wanted to store some extra darts back here, you can do that. So those are the externals of the Vigilante. Next up is the Hawkeye. Now this looks quite a bit different than the Vigilante, but it's actually quite similar in function. Up in the front, it doesn't have an in strike barrel attachment point. Of course, it's not a Nerf blaster, but it does have a tactical rail on the top here. It includes this little scope, which I have right here, but you can also slide it, you know, anywhere along this giant rail. The included scope, of course, doesn't magnify, and it's actually harder to see through than a lot of Nerf scopes because it tries to be like somewhat precise. Instead of magnifying with like a crosshair, it just restricts your vision, so you have to line it up. So it kind of helps in accuracy in that sense, but it's also more challenging to look through. This blaster, like the Vigilante, is pump action. It's spring powered, so you do that, and it's primed to fire once. And also like the Vigilante, it's break action in addition to pump action. So after you prime or before, you can pull down on the barrel like that, exposing the single barrel right here. So you can load by just pushing in your dart like this. The Hawkeye does work with elite darts and does shoot them quite hard, actually. So after you load in your dart, you can just push forward and you're ready to go. Moving down to the trigger. Now, the catch release is pretty standard, so it feels somewhat normal. However, it also feels completely different because of a unique element put into the Hawkeye blaster. So when you pull the trigger, the stock wiggles a bunch. And this happens when it's primed or unprimed. So if you want to run around with your Nerf blaster or foam flinging blaster and you're not actually shooting, you can kind of dry fire and make it click. If you run around and pull a normal trigger, it doesn't really do anything. But with this, you can make a racket. So everybody around you knows you're, you're dry firing. 
Might be along the lines of the X-Shot like recoil type of concept to try to give you simulated recoil. It certainly doesn't feel like, like legitimate recoil, but it's pretty cool and I haven't seen it before. And to restate this stock wiggling thing happens whether or not you're actually firing. So you could prime it back and release and it's not just a dry fire only. So when you're shouldering the blaster or if it's near your shoulder but you're not applying pressure to it, it still wiggles, which is kind of weird. For example, if you're not applying pressure and your face is right here, it's gonna wiggle and kind of bother you. Solution to that, if you actually shoulder it, it doesn't wiggle at all. The pressure of your shoulder puts it in and then it doesn't move. To the grip, it's small and I would definitely say this is younger person friendly, but it's not uncomfortable to my hand. I think they really nailed the grip here. If I had this grip on a really big heavy blaster like a Nemesis, it would be kind of annoying because of that weight. That's when grip is super important. This is a very lightweight blaster, uh, but I think it's well done. Moving back to the stock, it is a really cool color. It's like a translucent teal and I think it's pretty cool when light hits it and kind of travels through it. Obviously not performance boost there, but more importantly than performance is style points. <laughs> But in all seriousness, there are four little ammo slots up here so you can hold extra ammo in your stock. Of course, the length of the stock is pretty short. This whole blaster is kind of miniature. It feels like a scaled down version of a regular Nerf blaster. That being said, it's not uncomfortable. It doesn't feel cramped. Usually when it's super small, good example, this MK3, it's super small on the hand. It's just awkward for somebody of a larger size like me to use. The Hawkeye is not uncomfortable to use. So ergonomics, solid. Next blaster is the Reflex 6. Now this one's a spring action six shot blaster. Starting up with the front, it has a rotating cylinder system that holds six darts to load you can just front load ammo like that. The cylinder doesn't pop out of the blaster, but it doesn't need to. All of the barrels are exposed from the front. Up top, this design looks like a tactical rail, but it's not a real functional rail. You can't put anything on it. Well, I suppose with duct tape, you can put anything anywhere, but you know, it's not designed to have quick attachments. Moving down, the trigger pull is pretty standard. This blaster does not have slam fire. And the grip, like the other ones, other than the MK3, is small, but not uncomfortable. It's a pretty comfortable, the, the balance of this blaster is actually solid. And it doesn't feel as front heavy as like the disruptor or the strong arm. Those aren't unbalanced blasters by any means, but the balance of the Reflex 6 is a little better in my opinion. And to prime the Reflex 6, it, you pull back on the priming handle like that. The prime is pretty smooth and the power level is as expected. It feels like a very normal Nerf blaster. And I really dig this translucent teal, just like the other blasters. It's like a series theme with the white, with the navy and this. It's just a very cool color and when light hits it, it looks cool. And small detail, but the cylinder does rotate on the prime instead of the trigger pull which just means the trigger release is pretty smooth, not like the Maverick where you have to rotate the cylinder with the trigger. The trigger is just dropping the catch for a very quick, crisp drop. That is the Reflex 6. Now to the MK3 blaster. Can you see it? Let's zoom in, because this one's small. <laughs> The MK3 is spring powered and it has a, a manually rotating three shot barrel up front. It's a front loader, so you just slide in your darts, super easy, again, three barrels, three capacity. It has this cute little mock rail up on the top, uh, but it's not a real functional rail, it's, if you couldn't tell by the scale. Moving back, the trigger release is crisp, pretty solid, but this grip, while it looks pretty cool, it looks like a scaled down version of the Reflex 6 and it's just not comfortable for my hand at all. Maybe if you're a toddler or like under the age of four, it, it, it seems like it might fit you very well, but if you have somewhat of a normal sized hand, it'll just be super cramped. However, it's a small, simple blaster, so it's not like you require the dexterity to hit a rev switch or to do a mag release or anything like that. So compromise grip, not too big a deal. This isn't a primary, obviously. Maybe a little backup pistol to throw in a cargo pocket. This might fit in a regular pocket, actually. It's pretty small. To prime the MK3, you pull back on this little teal thing. Again, it's a series theme, looks pretty cool. But unfortunately, it's a manually rotating barrel. It's not a smart AR, and it's not an auto-rotating cylinder. When you manually move to the next barrel, you can kind of feel it like lock into place into the next fixed barrel, but it's not as confirming as I would like. It is a little sloshy and I found myself kind of looking down just to make sure I'm not like between barrels like this because it won't fire very well. That's a cost saving measure. It requires more mechanics to do a smart AR or like an auto rotating cylinder. I don't even know if you could make an auto rotating cylinder that small, but kind of a bummer that you have to manually rotate, whatevs. That's the last overview of the MK3. Now let's see all these blasters out on the firing range.
Leak darts are the problem, not these blasters. <laughs> Operating the blasters went as expected. Now, the only issue that I want to point out is the Vigilante. It can technically fire Nerf Elite darts, it just doesn't fire them very well, and it also has a loading issue because of the length, or perhaps the stem length, of the Nerf Elite dart. As I mentioned, when you shut the barrel, it kind of clips the head of the Nerf Elite dart. It doesn't have any issues at all with the X-Shot darts, but just Nerf Elite darts. Other than this single issue, all the blasters worked as they should. Now to the chrono results of all the blasters. The Vigilante achieved an average of 72 feet per second with the included X-Shot darts, and only 56 feet per second with Nerf Nerf Elite darts, meaning it shoots just fine with X-Shot darts, but like I mentioned, it doesn't work very well with Nerf Elite darts. Next, the Hawkeye achieved an average velocity of 81 feet per second with the included X-Shot darts, and 77 feet per second with Nerf Elite darts, which is a pretty healthy jump over that 70 FPS par we can expect from no most Nerf blasters on the market right now. When you're shooting it, you can tell it shoots a little faster than other blasters. Next, I put up the Reflex 6 and achieved an average velocity of 73 feet per second with the X-Shot darts, and 71 feet per second with Nerf Elite darts, which is a hair over the 70 FPS par, but not a whole lot. I would just say it shoots about normal. And lastly, the MK3, with an average velocity of 74 feet per second with X-Shot darts, and 67 feet per second with Nerf Elite darts. Meaning it doesn't accept Nerf Elite darts quite as well, but it shoots them reasonably hard. Particularly for a backup blaster, a Jolt and other single-shot blasters by Nerf usually shoot under 60 FPS. So to see performance around 70 feet per second is actually better than normal for an emergency backup like this. That is all of the objective information on these X-Shot blasters. Now to my personal opinion on these products. My opinion on the Vigilante and the Hawkeye are pretty similar. Now they work pretty well, and other than the Elite Dart issue that I already pointed out with the Vigilante, they didn't have any jams or malfunctions, but they're pretty simple blasters, so I wasn't really expecting any issues. I mean, how could a single shot blaster jam, really? So they shoot as expected. The Hawkeye actually shoots a little harder than most blasters on the market right now, but my mindset is more aggressive, more practical nerfing. These blasters are not really designed to defeat other people or zombies in a nerf battle. They're simply too slow, and they don't fire enough rounds per minute for me. And I find it really interesting that they combine the break action with the pump action. A break action traditionally would allow that to be the actual prime, so then you load the dart and then you can fire right there. Combining pump action with the break action makes you do this and then prime it, and now you're ready to fire, which is a lot of time to shoot off one dart. I mean, it's a little faster with the Vigilante because every time you break open the barrel, you can load in two, so you don't have to do that quite as often. But it's still super slow. I don't think either of these blasters are designed for competitive nerfers. Outside of the realm of competitive nerf, I think they're both okay to, to plink around with. I'm sure you knew my opinion of these before you even clicked on the video. Moving on to the pistols. Now, I think the Reflex 6 is a well-executed pistol. It shoots pretty well. It feels nice in the hand. I like the balance. It's very lightweight. And some people just really dig these simple prime action instead of like a top slide, like a strong arm or a disruptor. I like both. I'm not sure I like one or the other. You do lose out on slam fire, like from the strong arm and the disruptor, so you can shoot a little faster with those. But the performance out of the Reflex 6 is pretty solid. To the MK3, this is a little disappointing to me. Without comparing it to any other options out on the market, it works okay. If you consider it a single shot pistol that happens to have pre-loaded backup rounds, but it's hard to say this is really like a three-shot pistol when stuff like the Triad exists, where you can fire off three continuous shots without reloading and without manually changing out your barrel. Just like the Hawkeye and the Vigilante, they're very slow, and this is as well, because you have to do two actions. First prime, and then change your barrel. Now you're ready to fire. Instead of something like the Triad, where you just prime, fire, prime, fire, prime, fire, and you can fire off three without reloading, because it features a smart AR. And the Reflex 6 is also much faster, because it has an auto-rotating, you know, cylinder, like most pistols. So I wouldn't say it's special, but compared to the these, it performs much better. So if you're looking for a competitive backup pistol, a Triad seems like a, a better decision to me, but the MK3 comes in at a different price point. So that's it for my opinion. So hopefully I've laid out all of the objective information on these products so you can make the purchase decision for yourself. So that's it for this group review of some new blasters by X-Shot. I personally think the new paint scheme looks super cool, and I especially like this translucent teal. I think it looks super cool when the light hits it. Uh, you don't think too many people care about that, but I do. I think it looks awesome. If you're interested in purchasing any of these blasters, I'll have buy links in the description box below. That's it for this video review. Thanks so much for watching bros and as always stay tactical.